So the next thing I want to talk about very briefly, we've talked about auto-scaling the scope output. If you want to manipulate the simulation results in MATLAB, say you want to plot things in the way you want, you're very familiar with MATLAB functions and you want to use them, you could always use this, what's called the um, two workspace blocks. And I'm going to just go over it. So this block here, okay? So I put this block, this is again my 10 minus 5 y example, and I go and say I want to output y into the workspace. I can just go connect it to y here, which is what I did, okay? And so now sim out would be my output into the Mat MATLAB workspace. So I run this simulation, and now, no, 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 uh, two workspace is the name of the block. So why doesn't everybody actually put that in there? Just search for it in the library, I think. I don't exactly remember which library it is in. Workspace, it's called. For the 10 minus 5 Y model, it's 5. So this block, it looks like this. It'll say sim out by default. Has everybody found the block? Just I just searched for it. I don't remember which library it is under. Because it's called two workspace. So I'm just quick, going to quickly show, if you do sim out here, right, then sim out is actually this sort of structure, and I don't know if you've dealt with these structures, time series structures before. Okay, why do, has everybody gotten to workspace? Got? Good. Okay. So when, then when you run the simulation, you'll have this variable called sim out, which is generated. And the way to, it's just, if you've taken, um, it's just like a class or a struct or whatever. And so sim out dot time should give you the time points that were used. Okay, sim out dot time. And that's again, if you look at sim out, it's got these various attributes, time, data. And the way to always get attributes out of these things is use the dot. So sim out, sim out dot time will give you all the time points. If I do sim out dot data, that should give me all the data points. So if I could plot these in MATLAB, for example, on my own, sim out dot time, comma sim out dot data, and right. And so then I get the same thing. Okay. I just again connected it to the output of the integrator. No, no, no. Once you, uh, did you run the thing? So use the auto scale feature. So right click, right click. No, just on the plot, right click. It won't. Oh, you're doing 10 plus. You see that? You did the minus 5 gain and you did oh. the minus. So you do a 5 gain. You do either or. Wait. It's working, right? I have that. Okay. So sim out, is that what you're asking about? So sim out has, so you can just type in sim out here. So you see how sim out, this was basically spit out by my simulation now because of the two workspace block. And if you just type in sim out, you have time and you have data. So you could do sim out dot time to get the time set and you could do sim out dot data to get the data set. Let's, let, let me finish stuff and then we'll come back to it if it's not working. Uh, there should be a stop button. 
So there should be a stop button here. Show you where the stop button is. Run and there's a pause and a stop which com should come up when you're running. Okay, let's let's look at it after class then. I just want to out for now. Okay, so the other thing I want to talk about here is that a lot of the blocks that we're looking at, they have a lot of inputs, right, which we get at by double clicking on the blocks. Those inputs don't necessarily need to be just scalars, they could be vectors as well. Okay, so for example, if, my, if I wanted to integrate for two different initial values, say I did five, but I also wanted to do for zero, so I could, I could go back to my integrator block here, but on this one, and I could specify my initial condition. So it's very important to include square brackets here, like that, so it's a vector now, so which means that I should get two plots out, right? One corresponding to each initial condition, okay? So let's just do that, okay? And then I run this. So if you look at the scope now, there are two plots. One, for the first initial condition, I, I mentioned that yellow is the first plot it sees. So that's for the zero initial condition, makes sense. And the purple is for the five initial condition. Does that make sense to everybody? Is everybody getting that? And I can double verify that sort of by looking at sim out now. So earlier sim out here was a 52 by one double in data, and now I have two, col two columns here, 58 by two, corresponding to each initial condition, okay? Okay? Okay, and so you have this way of sort of getting stuff for every element in a vector. You also, you know that you could use for loops to traverse the vector, and there's actually a for each subsystem block. It's basically a for loop in Simulink as well which you could also use for the same thing. So pretty much everything you can do in MATLAB, you can do in Simulink, and everything you can do in Simulink. Just lit literally a graphical interface to do this. Yeah? So there's one question in the problem set where you could either use vectors to do some, you get the frank starting curve. I don't know if you've heard about that curve so far in lecture yet, so perhaps. But uh, from the model, you'll be generating a frank starting curve. And you could use for loop to do that, or you could use vector machine. The other thing is you can comment blocks in and out, just like you comment code in MATLAB. And the way to do that, for example, is you could just go here. And so say my sim out block, I want to comment it out. I don't want any output to go in. And so to see that first, I'm gonna clear everything here. So also, there's no clear all every time you run the simulation. So all the variables you've defined thus far will be remain. So if you're running the simulation over and over again and you're using the same variable, out to represent the output, it's gonna keep getting overwritten, okay? So anyway, so I cleared everything, and now, so I right click on the sim out and do comment out, and so now I would expect that when I run the simulation, no sim out is generated, okay? You can comment stuff out, and and also then finally, I want to, before I finish up with this demo, I want to talk about using the derivative block. There is one. Um, however, MATLAB, MathWorks itself recommends using the integrator block because the derivative block could be very sensitive as far as its step sizes are concerned to the input signal and so to the dynamics of the model itself. The other problem, I was trying to make this, make this differential equation system work with the derivative block yesterday. Uh, the other problem is that the first output of the derivative block is zero. Okay, which means that your initial value, right, because if the derivative is zero, that means that the initial value must be the steady state value, which in this case is two. And so the only way I could at least get it to work was I take my y signal, which is two to begin with, and then I put in an impulse of three, and then feed that into the derivative blocks. Impulse being a very short pulse of three, and then I could somehow get the simulation to work. I don't, maybe there's a more convenient way of getting it to work, maybe you guys could tell me. Um, but, so that's why also the derivative block is not that convenient because it's not that easy to specify an initial condition, okay? So just use the integrator blocks for the most part to simulate this. 